Welcome to the Corona for 3ds Max tutorial covering the Corona Multimap. We'll be taking a look at the many ways the Multimap can speed up your workflow and go into how you can really leverage the Multimap to its full potential. The Multimap is a huge time saver because it allows you to easily and parametrically randomize the color and brightness of a given bitmap used in your scene, or even to distribute different bitmaps randomly over objects or elements. The Multimap is a powerful tool if you are trying to avoid repetition in color or texture, or make a material setup more manageable. For example, you can use the Multimap to randomize the look of each leaf on a tree, while making each tree look different to the next, or use it to generate a randomized texture when you are modeling floor tiles using a scattering plugin. The Multimap is a useful tool in crafting different materials without actually creating multiple Corona materials or using the 3ds Max Multi Sub-Object node. Recent updates in Corona 3 have also added a Bi Element mode to the Multimap and UVW randomizer, and we'll be looking at what that can mean for your daily work and time savings. In this tutorial, you will see the Multimap used with just its default colors, or with bitmaps as inputs, or in conjunction with the Corona Mix node, and all three methods work equally well. To understand how the Corona Multimap works, we can start with a fresh scene in 3ds Max and create a plane with a standard Corona material applied to it. If we start to interactive render and drag a Corona Multimap into the diffuse slot, you will see the plane is allocated one of six default colors in the Multimap. The Multimap begins to work its magic once you have multiple objects, materials or surfaces that these colors can be distributed to. If we open the Multimap's mode selector, you should see seven different modes that control how the color or texture is allocated to your geometry. First in line is the primitive mode. This will distribute a different color to each triangulated surface on your geometry. This means that even if your face is a quad, it will receive a color for each triangle that makes up that quad. The next mode is the by material distribution, in which each separate material that the multimap is connected to will receive a different color. This may be useful if you want to control the color across separate materials in one node. Following this is instance mode. This may be one of the most commonly used modes as it allows you to randomize from one instance to the next, which is most useful in scattered objects. This may be the case with tiles in a rail clone floor or cars spread in a parking lot using forest pack. You can also use material ID mode to randomize color, which may be useful if you want to control an object with multiple material IDs all through one material. If you look at this model of a toy car, we would like the entire model to have the same bump and reflectivity maps as it should resemble painted wood and just vary the color of the different components. To control which color is spread to each component, we can use the material IDs and apply one material with a single bitmap for the bump, gloss and diffuse channel. Then we can use the multimap and the Corona Mix node to randomize the colors of the parts as we group them in material IDs. This becomes even more powerful if we combine it with the multimap node that is set to instance, through which we can have multiple toy cars that are allocated colors in a very controllable, yet easily randomizable fashion. To do this, all we need to change is to run the colors we want to randomize through their own multimap set to instance before they enter our main multimap. This means that we can keep the colors of the wheels constant while the other colors change from one instance to the next. The next two modes are Material GBuffer ID and Object GBuffer ID mode, where you can use these channels to control how objects are allocated their colors. This means that you can pick individual objects or materials by their GBuffer ID to receive colors by your specification. The Material GBuffer ID can be set in the advanced options of any Corona material. Please note that the Material GBuffer overrides the Object GBuffer, so use both only with caution. The object gbuffer can be set by opening the object properties in the viewport. Finally, the Corona 3 update allows you to distribute colors using the new mesh element mode, which supports randomization per contiguous triangle group. This allows you to randomize elements within one object, as may be the case with trees, rail clone floors, or any other scattering plugin. If you are using the Multimap to randomize various textures, you can use the Batch Load Texture function to import a list of bitmaps into your scene. 
These bitmaps will be imported with the Corona bitmap by default to improve performance and map filtering. You can easily adjust the number of colors or bitmaps by using the item count in the multimap. The hue and gamma random parameters will randomize each color according to the percentage selected. You can even use only a single color or bitmap as your input and randomize these using these adjustments. The multimap becomes most effective in randomization when combining various distribution modes, meaning that you would randomize by instance mesh elements and other modes all in one material. As a practical example, we can give this model of a tree a shot. It has three materials, one for the trunk, one for the branches and one for the leaves. To start us off, we want to randomize the colors of the leaves in this model. To do this, we're going to drag a Corona multimap from the material browser and plug it between the diffuse map and the diffuse input of the material. To randomize the color of each leaf, set the mode to mesh element and start adjusting the hue and gamma random as desired. This works for a single bitmap, or if you want to manually insert variations of the main bitmap, you can plug these into the other inputs. Once you are happy with the variations of the leaves within this tree, we can scatter the tree along a spline using Corona Scatter, for example. Now we might want to vary each tree along this distribution. To do that, we can drag in a new multimap that is set to instance mode, meaning it will vary the input colors on a by object basis. Now you can vary the hue and gamma in this node or duplicate the previous mesh element node as a sequential input and change each node's seed to create a new variation. To go one step further, we might want to vary the amount of leaves each tree has. This can easily be achieved by creating a multimap that is set to mesh element mode for the opacity input, where one of the colors is set to black and the other uses the leaf's alpha map as an input. Now the opacity channel will either be set to receive the alpha map or black as an input, causing the mesh element that receives the black input to be invisible. The distribution will be 50-50 if the frequency of both colors is set to 1, and changing this ratio will then alter how many leaves are visible in your tree. Using the same technique as before, we can now use a second multimap set to instance to create variations in leaf count across our scattered trees. Please note that the Corona multimap does not preview accurately in the viewport, meaning that live feedback is only available through the interactive render. However, the simplicity and power of the multimap allows it to make quick work of any material randomization you may want to do, and really holds limitless applications in store. That concludes our tutorial on the Corona multimap, and we hope that this information will aid you in creating more lifelike renders in less time.